Let's turn now to exploring the Shema, discussions on the issues of Trinity. We've got about 23 minutes left in the hour-long study from the time I'm looking at my little timer here. So let's use this opportunity to turn to John 1.1, and we might look at 14, but specifically we're still on John 1.1. I'm going to spend most of my time on the technical aspects. Um, so let me jump to the uh, alternate browser that I've got opened up here. All right. If you'll notice by looking on my screen, you'll realize that we've been studying John 1.1 very particularly through the Greek and in the English. I'm not going to say and confess that the Greek um, must be fully understood before you can understand the passage in English. In my opinion, the, the, the majority of major translations of John 1.1 are easy enough to understand from the uh, translations, and they're faithful to the original Greek. It's the unfortunate... Um, uh, alternate translations such as the New World Translation by the Watchtower Society that we're going to look at here, the Jehovah's Witnesses. That version is the one that kind of throws some people off because of the way they have translated. So let's just jump right into this and we'll spend all of our time on John 1.1 1, 1 and get the technicalities out of the way. And maybe if we have time, uh, we'll start looking at the word, uh, word theology in ancient Judaism. We'll continue down that road. But first, let's get the technical parts out of the way, the parts that some people are hard to work with. All right, so I, what I've got pulled up right now is BibleHub.com's interlinear, where we can see it looks kind of busy of a page to you, but we've got, um, starting from top to bottom, we've got Strong's number right there for any given word. We've got the transliteration just below that. We've got the original Greek just below that. We've got the translation right there in the red. And then we've got what's called the morphology, which gives us our parts of speech, our, our um, uh, different inflections that, that verbs and nouns and things like that can be found in. Um, like if I hover over it, you can see noun, dated, feminine, singular. We can see preposition. We can see verb, imperfect, indicative, active, third person, singular. So all of the technical data that allows people to do further word studies. More than you would get if you were just reading through, say, a Strong's Concordance. It's a great little tool here, BibleHub.com. I highly recommend it. All right, so let's read the English real quick, and then just I'll point out some highlights in the Greek. And this is um, the conclusion to what I kind of introduced uh, a week or so ago about what about the word was a God in the New World Translation. Uh, what do we make of this uh, subject and predicate relationship between uh, the, the, you know, the missing article and things like that? You'll, you'll understand what I mean when I just explain it. In the beginning, this is the English, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God was the Word. That's a literal reading from the English, from the Greek down over into the English. And when we look at the Greek, as we read in our liturgy, uh, we'll just hit it word by word. En arche, en halagos, kai halagos, en proston theon, kai theos, en halagos. All right, so what we notice is that in Greek, we've got this definite article. By the way, Greek has no indefinite article, such as a or an, but it has a definite article, which is the. And the definite article uh, is uh, follows the um, form of whatever word that it is attached to. Greek is fully inflected so that um, uh, pronouns and articles, they have to match the same case and form and number and gender as the words that they're attached to. So we have the word halagos right we have it here as well the word was with and then in greek we literally have ton theon so literally it's the god although this uh tool that i'm using here in bible hub simply leaves that out but literally we it would be the god in the beginning was the word and the word was with the god all right that's that's, that's not uh, that doesn't mean we have to put that back into our English, was with the God. The, the really interesting question is why John simply says, Kai and Theos. Notice there's no, where my mouse is right here, between Kai and Theos. Notice there's no article in front of Theos like we have over here. He doesn't have Kai ton Theos or Ha Theos or anything like that. He simply has, and Theos ain Ha the Logos. So the question is asked, given that we have two nouns, right, we have word and we have God, which one is the subject and which one is the object or the predicate nominative? How do we translate this verse? And God was the word or and the word was God? 
All right, so we're, that's what we're going to be looking at a little bit tonight. Let's turn first to, um, real quick, we looked at this a few weeks back. This is the emphatic diaglot Greek text. This is the um, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, Greek version of their Bible. And you'll notice from the little highlights that they have, I just pulled this straight from a little screenshot. You'll notice from their um, uh, uh, emphasis that God, and you can see over here on the red, red part, Tom Thaon, the God, definite article, Kai Thaos, and God, no article, the indefinite article is indicated. And then for translated consistency, this should be translated as and a God. And of course, that's why they render it here. You can see on the screen, verse 1, in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. But actually, if you read their translation that they hold, it says, and the word was, or the Logos was a God. Lagos was a god. And the reason they put the indefinite article in there is because according to them, as I mentioned, sorry, my screen keeps moving and I don't want it to move. There we go. Uh, uh, they say that um, that the indefinite article is implied by the missing definite article. Thus, they phrase it as a god. Of course, we know theologically that they put this because they don't believe that Jesus is fully divine. They don't believe that he is fully one with God. Uh, they believe that he is a creature. He's created, like the Aryan view, right? Similar to Dr. Dale Tuggies that we're going to talk about later on as well. So the Jehovah's Witnesses, the, the New World Translation, reflects, reflects their theology. Of course, we know that this is the minority opinion when it comes to Trinitarian perspectives.